Phillips. Let's bring in aviation correspondent Richard Quest. Now, Richard, thanks for joining us. The plane that went down is an A320. How common is this plane? How old was this specific aircraft? Well, the, the plane itself is the absolute workhorse of global aviation for short-haul flights. <clears throat> More than 8,000 have been ordered. There's about 5,000 of them flying in the air. It's a Boeing rival is the 737. And, and Jake, you've just got to look out of the window at any airport, and you're going to see, particularly here in Asia where I am, or in Europe, even in the US, you will see dozens of the A320 family, which ranges from the A318, the smaller version, right the way up to the A321. Uh, uh, so extremely popular, very well liked by the aviation industry and by passengers, uh, an exceptionally reliable plane uh, that, that, that frankly is the backbone of much of aviation at the moment. All right, Richard, stick around. I, I want to bring in someone else to join us, CNN counterterrorism analyst Paul Cruikshank. Uh, Paul, uh, the working theory right now is that this was an act of terrorism. The House Homeland Security Chairman, Congressman Michael McCall, just said, quote, it's most likely an act of terrorism. Have there been any claims of responsibility and who might potentially be behind this? Uh, Jake, no claims of responsibility at all, no credible claims, uh, certainly from terrorist groups such as ISIS or Al-Qaeda. There's been a real deafening silence from ISIS. They've put out statements on all sorts of other operations in Syria and Iraq, but nothing about this. And by point of comparison, uh, when that metro jet went down over the Sinai Peninsula back in October, the last day of October, they put a statement out the same day. Uh, just a few hours later, claiming responsibility for that attack. ISIS very trigger-happy, very quick to claim credit for attacks over social media. Uh, does this delay mean perhaps it wasn't ISIS? Investigators will be looking uh, into that, of course, if it is terrorism at all. Uh, when you look at all these international terrorism groups, the group that is most capable of pulling off an attack like this is not ISIS, it's Al-Qaeda, because Al-Qaeda has been developing... Uh, new types of explosive devices to try to beat airport security. They have Ibrahim al Assyri, a master bomb maker in Yemen, who's coming up with new generations of underwear devices, shoe bombs, uh, also experimenting with surgically implanting bombs into human beings, according to recent uh, intelligence, Jake. Concerned that al-Qaeda in Yemen sharing that technology with affiliates such as Jabhat al-Nusra in Syria, such as al-Shabaab in Somalia. And with that Somalian group we saw in February of this year, an actual bombing of a Somali airliner, Dalo Airlines Flight 159, which took off uh, with a sophisticated laptop bomb uh, inside. Fortunately, it went off not at high altitude. Only the bomber was blown out of the aircraft. The plane managed to get uh, back uh, down on the ground. They found more laptop bombs. Um, uh, after that, there was another attempt uh, in Somalia. Uh, so you're looking uh, perhaps at, at the scenario of Al-Qaeda possibly uh, being responsible for this. But early stages, because right now, Jake, there is no concrete evidence that this is terrorism. Uh, that is just a working theory. Right. They want to put meat on the bone of that theory in the hours ahead. Right. No concrete evidence as of yet. Richard, one way that these investigators are conducted, investigations are conducted is looking at, at similarities with past aviation disasters. Given what we know and your encyclopedic knowledge of other previous airline disasters, which ones does this most resemble as of right now? Well, if you're talking about the possibility of a mechanical issue versus a, 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 a bomb, then you're looking at Air France 447 and you're looking at Air Asia over the Java Sea. Because both of those cases, the aircraft fell out of the sky at altitude. In this case, um, uh, the Egypt airplane was flying at flight level 37,000 feet, 370, uh, and it just literally stops. The profile of the aircraft just stops. Now, we've heard these reports of supposedly swerving pieces 90 degrees to the left and, to, and, and then to the right. Um, that's starting to look less likely. It's starting to look more as if it's uh, the, the plane breaking up. But those are the two on mechanical. One final point, Jake. If it is terror and the bomb or device got on in Paris, then you're talking about a very different security issue here. Charles de Gaulle, you're into a completely different league to anything we saw with Sharm el-Sheikh.